modify the value on the fly and send you basically, if we look again at this one, it will change the, the to account or the from account to whatever account he wants. So of course if the guy does this, we know he had an agenda, we know it's an attack, it's obvious. A normal user couldn't do it even by mistake. It's not possible. He must install some, uh, some uh, proxies and he must mess around. If you mess around, we can catch you and we'll take action. So tampering detection, uh, as far as the network IDS is concerned, can be done, but it's not trivial. When the application sends the form to the, to the browser, we can parse it and record uh, whichever fields are supposed to not be modified. And then when uh, the response comes back from the user, we can analyze and verify if the guy messed with it or not in a limited manner. So what's the problem with this? The problem is, what about bad HTML? About 90% of the websites that are out there don't know how to use HTML. It's not valid HTML, so it's hard to pass. Your browsers are very nice. They let you display crappy HTML. It shouldn't. I tell you, if, if it didn't, then people would, uh, would use proper HTML. It would just work. Uh, what about when people are not using HTML forms? They are using what we call remoting which is basically uh, whichever remoting protocol you may want, XML RPC, SOAP, AJAX, uh, JSON RPC, all those, like in Gmail, for example. Uh, well, those, since there is no form going to the clients, uh, there's nothing I can record, so there's nothing I can check on the way back. It can be implemented on a, on a framework itself, so that's a lot more accurate, because the form itself, or uh, the, the data, uh, the the interaction itself is built by the, by the framework, by this guy, the application core ask the HIDS to actually build a form for you. Well, at the building time you can record and, uh, and get all the constraints. <coughs> so on this way back, when you come back, you can verify the integrity of all those. So now, what about uh, detecting behaviors? Like I said, the whole, uh, the whole goal uh, of, of this talk will be detecting behaviors. We know the behaviors of attacker, because we are attackers ourselves. So we'll list those that are obviously attacked that we can catch, and we'll build this into the framework. So some mistakes are definitely not mistakes. For example, if in less than a minute you already failed your password uh, five times, either you're an idiot and you don't remember your password, or uh, you're attacking. And in one minute, it means you type it really, really fast. You're really stubborn. A real user who forgot his password will fail it three times, sorry, he will fail it two times and then he will think twice. Should I type it a third time? Huh? So there will be a pause and it will be more than a minute. It's the same if you're trying to do SQL uh, injections or, uh, or cross-site scripting in a very blatant manner on a field that obviously doesn't contain such characters, then we can detect it very easily. Same for buffer overflow. Who knows uh, family names that are more than 200 characters? You're obviously attacking me. And I don't have a sense of humor. So mistakes that are not mistakes, it's the same. Uh, the, when you ignore the flow of the application on normal, uh, for example, uh, e-business application, you have to check out first, then confirm, and enter your credit card and everything. If you go directly to the thanks for purchasing uh, this item, you're cheating. You didn't follow my links, you went underneath. If you go underneath, I, I see you doing it, I catch you and I stop you. A very simple one, but I like very much. Uh, I hate filling forms, like all of you. And when you have forms with 50 fields and you fill it under a minute, uh, either you're the fastest guy at that type that I've ever seen, or uh, you're cheating. You're obviously using a program to do it. As in, you're attacking it. Same, uh, all of you know what's a captcha. Captcha is uh, when you when you subscribe. Sometimes they ask you to read uh, the write down or those letters that you see on the image. If you fail it five times in a row, it's either you are totally blind, in which case the organization have to do something for you, or not. It depends if they support blind users, uh, or you obviously attacking and you don't know how to attack. So you will see this uh, this uh, NIPS and HIDS love people who don't know how to attack in the first place because they are easier to catch. And those who know how to attack will be caught using some more difficult ones. At least all those easy ones will be out of the way. So on a network-based one, we could implement some more, I mean some, uh, most, mostly only this you can, in the, you can put on, a, on the network one. It's very limited because it has to be generic. 
So we could check, of course, if you're trying to put some, uh, some scripting inside there. If you do, we could catch you. The problem is that there will be a lot of false positives. What if it's a forum and it's a technical forum and I have to write those to show you, for example? Then you would fail. Uh, SQI injection is the same problem and buffer overflow is the same problem. We could basically try to catch you, but it would have to be really adapted to your environment. And we all know what happens with generic ideas that you adapt to your environment. You never adapt it properly, and then uh, there is a lot of false alarms. The security admin get tired of uh, having his page up page all the time, so he just put it aside. So it means you're getting attacked and you don't even know anymore. So all of them have a lot of false positives and a lot of false negatives. I don't like network ideas in the first place. That is pretty obvious. They are trivial to bypass, uh, even those for purely network attacks. So of course, having said that, it means we'll mostly focus on the application-based one, on the framework itself. So uh, the main goal, like I said, of detecting this attack is so that we can take action. I don't want you, uh, you know, trying too hard. Let's say somebody is trying to rob your house and your house is a, is a, is a fortress, you know they won't manage, but then you don't want him banging on the door the whole night. Neither do I on the application. So, uh, and also I want to know who performed what and when. This is very important. If there's a fraud later or things like this, I want some forensics expert to be able to do their work, which right now they can't. Right now your application has zero log or 10 million log, in which case it's the same. We can't pass them. And of course, because I detect now, we'll be able to prevent. As soon as it trigger, we stop the, the guy exactly where he is and we take action. So what kind of action can we take? Very simple, you name it. Uh, it could be done in a plugin form. So of course, such a framework could implement some uh, basic ones, like email the, the sysadmin, uh, send SMS, put a, put a light that rotates and everything. It's very fun, we used to do this in 1999, having a, a light like this that rotates. After a while, there were so many attacks that it grew on our nerves, so we took it out. Especially when people are not succeeding in the attack. Uh, you could do pretty much uh, every, anything you want. My favorite basically would be to redirect the guy to some other site. Like this, the guy wouldn't, wouldn't even find out it's been redirected and he would continue attacking. A funny one would be to redirect them on the American government, for example. That would, that would get them angry a bit. Uh, but that wouldn't re be really friendly if you're a big corporation, you couldn't do that. But at least you could redirect them to a honey net or things like this. So now, how do we plan to do this, uh, this uh, host-based uh, intrusion <coughs> prevention system for application? We'll do it in the shape of a framework. All those techniques that we'll explain later, you can already take them one by one and integrate them in your existing application. But it's a pain. Uh, what I propose is that we write a framework, a generic application security framework that uh, new applications could use when they get written and uh, that would protect them automatically as much as possible. It's always as much as possible, unfortunately. So this is how it goes. What we propose is this, the, the hole underneath. So how does it work? It's very simple. Uh, when, you, when you build a form with constraints to get some input from the user, you go through the, you go through the, the HIPS, it will build a form for you with constraints. It will record those constraints it would record those constraints and send the form to the client. Now, when the form comes back, when the data of the form comes back, remember we recorded all the constraints. We, we are the one who built that form. We as the HIPS built the form so we know exactly what's in it. We know the constraints and everything. So now we can, we can check, did you mess with it? Did you modify stuff that is not supposed to be modified? Did you try to attack me with some classic attacks? I will list them later. Do you not follow the instructions? I told you the name is maximum 20 characters. Why are you trying to put more? I will verify this here. And of course, I will verify everything else here. Is this your account in the first place? Are you authorized to do it? Every, every mysterious validation will be done there. So anytime there is a, a, a problem spotted here, it will be sent to the, to the scoring system. What is the scoring system? It's very simple. We just look at, uh, we give you an attacker score. The higher the score, the more nasty you are. And then we can put a threshold. Let's say, uh, it's, uh, imagine it's a scale on uh, 1 to 10. If you go be a, 
let's say above five, we can say, okay, I alert the, the system, and if you go above seven, I could call the police, and things like this. Voilà, so build a form with constraints. Typically, the, the framework will mark for you hidden fields that are hidden. It will re remember what's the maximum value of fields. It will auto-generate the JavaScript for you, the client-side JavaScript. So that's interesting, at least you will have valid JavaScript after this. I'm tired of seeing JavaScript that doesn't even run properly. At least if the framework generated for you, it will work. That will be a good change. Uh, and of course, this JavaScript will be one more layer. We can detect later if you bypass it. If you bypass it, again, you're an attacker and we will mark you as such. The whole goal of, uh, of remembering those constraints is so that we can check them when on their way back. Now, when they come back, uh, we will verify that uh, fields that are not supposed to be modified are not modified. So, uh, for those of you who believe hidden fields uh, are really hidden and not, for those who believe that you can't modify them, you can, if you want to. But then if you do so, you're attacking us, and if we can detect it, so we'll stop you. Now the fun part, the attacking behavior detection. All those little attacks, or big attacks, depend, uh, depend uh, do you steal money with it or not. All those are typical that every application tester or every hacker would try on your application. But because they are so typical, of course, we can put them in the framework and uh, you won't be able to do it anymore. Example of an attack uh, behavior. Uh, you keep on failing everything you're doing. A normal user is not that stupid. And if he is, well, you give him a bad score and then he will call the bank and the bank will take, talk to him. You know. SQL injection is the same. You're trying, to, you're trying to attack us with very basic attack. SQL injection is a very basic attack. It's boring. Okay, you can, you can do whatever you want at the end of the day on the database system if you succeed. And then what? Can you steal money with an SQL injection? No. So you don't interest me with it. Of course, it can be very interesting on the forum. The forum is purely based on, uh, on, uh, on SQL databases. On a news site as well, you could change the news and put some false news, which is the best way for a news corporation to get sued. Buffer overflow as well would be trivial to detect Missing cookies is one of my favorites. Cookies are, are put by default on your browser, and we can force you to accept them. And so you will accept them or not use the application. But then if all of a sudden they are missing, it means the guy is trying to attack by hand and forgot to put the cookie. I'm sorry, when you attack and you forget to attack properly, then of course we'll catch you. Missing referral is the same. It's on the browser always puts the referral. It's only attacker who don't put it. Some software out there remove it, but then I will prevent, from, I will prevent you from using them. I will tell you, as one of the conditions to use my application, you cannot use such a, such a proxy that removes the referral. Missing parameter is the same. Imagine a form with five fields. If the form comes back to me with only four fields, it means you don't know how to attack. It means you forgot one field. The browser doesn't forget fields. Uh, it's the same if you are, if you are attacking and uh, all of a sudden the user agent is modified. Let's say you logged on using uh, Internet Explorer and then the next request I get from you is using uh, Mozilla. Obviously, uh, it wasn't Mozilla. You cannot transfer a session just like this. Obviously, uh, you, you use the proxy, modified something, and modified it wrongly. Wrong payload encoding is my favorite. There's so many encodings in HTTP that when attacker attacks, sometimes, even myself, sometimes make mistake. We encode wrongly. Again, if you do, it means you don't know how to attack, or that you go too fast, and we'll catch it. Wrong header encoding is exactly the same on the header. Suspect you are a, uh, a classic. Who didn't try this on an application? One of the first things you try is to escape from the application and get, let's say, the password file when you go dot, 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 slash, I mean, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, etc password file. If you do this, we'll detect it automatically. Which user does this? If he does, it's not a user, it's an attacker. Those files are typical configuration file. Uh, this is on .NET, this is on uh, G2E. Those are backup files on Windows. Those, the tilde here is backup file on Unix. Who needs backup file? If you're trying to get a backup file, it means you're trying to get the, the raw file. You're again, you're attacking me, and I can detect it. My absolute favorite is the booby trap. It works uh, on any kind of warfare, whether military or, or anything else, and it always works. It's always the, the, the carrots there, and the guy get the carrot and fall. The mouse trap. 
example, 